Hello everyone, today is new front-end news episode with number 19. We are super excited, 7 great news. I think that all gonna be epic. But first thing first, Tomasz, how was your week? And when you gonna visit me? Uh, the question I love the most. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, my week was perfect. As always, as always, I was searching for the best news for you, my lovely audience. And I did find out seven news for you. And when I will visit you, it's like about of two, course. two weeks, man, two weeks. Two weeks. Guys, in two weeks, we're gonna shoot epic, epic news from the beach together, me and Tommy K. Ah, I cannot wait. Uh, from sunny Spain. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I cannot wait for that. Uh, this is this is something I was waiting for a long time to have uh, small holidays. You are waiting for holidays. I'm waiting for you to come to holidays, but I'm sure our audience is waiting for the agenda. So what's in? Okay, yeah, uh, let's jump into the agenda. And the first news will be about a CSS proposal that has been approved by CSS World Group community. And uh, this is about when else statement. Uh, this is very interesting, so I cannot Thomas, wait. Shh. Why, why you shush me? Let's wait uh, and reveal this later <laughs> and jump to the ne next news, which is JavaScript uh, engine update. Chrome Canary version 95. And finally, finally, they are planning to release new React version. Okay, okay, this is uh, something interesting, but uh, more interesting for me is the think about the party town I want to mention in this episode. You always like to mention about party, but I'm curious if you're gonna <laughs> ask to mention something about Gatsby 4. As the last but not least, Node.js updates the, you know, it's a very important point in all of our episodes. Okay, so we are all set. Let's watch the intro and talk about the news. See you guys there. Okay, guys, I can't wait to hear about CSS update. Tomasz, go on. Okay, okay, okay. CSS working group has approved the proposal for the CSS uh, when else statement. What it's all about? Okay, so let's take one step back and uh, discuss about what is the purpose of uh, having this when else statement. Imagine the situation you have the layout for your website. Um, which, which is not hard to imagine, okay? <laughs> and, <laughs> and you want to update styles for the different um, screen width, for the different screen size, for the different resolution. So, uh, for example, you want to change the background for the tablet and uh, change the padding for the mobile version. I think we have a solution for this. What are you using for that? What are you using for that? Media queries, of course. Okay, so... Um, Imagine that we have situation like we have the six media queries for the, I don't know, for some big component, okay? So this is very complex uh, style sheet, very complex styles for, uh, for such a case. And um, there are plenty of media queries. And the issue is... I was here and tried to go with it that uh, we shouldn't go further than three or four media queries. Yeah. I mean, breakpoints, not media queries. Yeah, this is this is like, you know, the good rule. It's all about keeping the code simple, as simple as it's possible. So, uh, as we know, more media queries, uh, it increases the complexity of the CSS code. So, uh, this rule applies almost to everything, like, you know, keep everything as simple as possible. And this is the good solution, uh, not only for CSS, but also for uh, JavaScript, HTML, everything, everything. But what's in the news? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, when else statement give us the possibility um, to take the media queries that share the same attributes for some reason, okay, and group them under the one state statement. So you can group two media queries, you can uh, group other CSS uh, pseudo selectors into one code block and, uh, you know, this shared attributes uh, you can write them once instead of uh, duplicate them multiple times. The CSS could look much better, cleaner, 
and uh, the else statement is also powerful in the whole block because we can use it as okay when the media query is lower than something and higher than something use this kind of attributes else if not use some kind of other attributes okay so um it gives new powers for the css and yeah we can work on you know uh, having the code much more cleaner and to group the properties under one stand statement instead of sounds interesting blocks. sounds interesting that might change uh, like the architecture of the css code uh, in general, so I'm very curious uh, and can't wait to read about this. I mean, it's new for me, so thank you, Tommy. No problem. <laughs> As always, it's a pleasure to serve you such news. <laughs> What's in the JavaScript engine? Okay, uh, V8 engine, new version 9.5, and now no breaking changes inside. Yay! Uh, unfortunately, but uh, what we have is a new API for the internationalization. Uh, it's called Display Names, and uh, it was introduced in Chrome 81, so it's not maybe a new API, but we have a new extension for that API. So the team has added uh, new supported types for the translations. It will be calendar and daytime fields so you can return the names translated names for the different kind of uh, daytime fields and uh, that's the biggest update from uh, from the version 9.5 maybe not all updates if you want to check more the link is where the link is in the description <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, you know what to do. Just check it out and read more about uh, the engine updates. That's it. That's it. Uh, so let's hear something about Chrome update. Okay, so uh, as we stick with the V8 engine and uh, the Google topics and other kind of stuff connected with uh, this front -end. environment. With front end. Exactly. That's new. That's new because this is front end news. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I thought I missed the rooms and it's, it's another kind of video. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so it's in. Come on. Okay. Focus. Uh, Chrome Canary version 95. They have a bunch of updates, not only for the developers, but um, yeah, from the higher perspective, let's speak about uh, what's new. New CSS length, authoring tools, um, height issues in the issues tab, improve the display of properties, report a translation bug, improved UI for the dev tools, and we have new Lighthouse version 8.4. Uh, included into the new Chrome uh, release. So it's What's in the Lighthouse? Check. It's my favorite tool, so I'm always curious. They just improved like, you know, the performance measurement logic. No breaking changes. I hope they didn't change uh, the algorithm <laughs> again. As always, something has to be changed. Someone has to have a work to do. Someone has to pay, you know, life. Life. <laughs> That's why Pronta is so expensive. Yes, it's expensive. <laughs> because we need to learn new version of React. What's in the React to me? I believe we spoke about React 18 in the past, or if no, this is the right time to hear about the new React 18 version. The alpha version has been approved after a few months of working, so we can expect the beta version of the React 18 in a couple of months, I believe. But of course, we can test it on our own. So yeah, if you want to leave a feedback, you know, help the guys to improve the React, you can check the alpha version. What has changed? The most interesting change from my perspective is that uh, the React team introduced a new root API and if you want to use the new benefits that will be included into React you have to switch from the old root API to the new one and yeah what's new okay but, so but talking about root API I mean we were always using external library for the routing I mean it's root like uh, the main place where you put where you inject the whole app Okay. I see, I see. So in the past, I mean, the legacy root API works like we have container that is created in the HTML file directly. 
uh, for example, it can be div with id app. And in old way, we have just inject the application inside this tag, okay? And now the mechanism with the new root API will work like um, we have this uh, root element in the HTML file, but before we will inject the app, we are creating the another root container, but from the code, okay? Not directly in the HTML. They have some mechanism under the hood, which are really complex that um, take care of uh, such uh, mechanism that, that, that can give a lot of uh, benefits for Not us. Not sure if I understand this correctly, but it was like easy as that, creating this element from JavaScript. I mean, I don't see any benefits yet. Let me speak about the benefits. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah. We will allow the components to render undefined values, uh, server-side support for the suspense, uncaptured suspense, null or undefined suspense fallback. So I'm not sure yet why uh, this new approach gives such benefits, but this is something I would like to check. Okay, guys, so if you know why the new root API will be better, you know, why what is the secret of uh, the, this improvement? Just leave a comment, please, because we are curious. If you know, help us with the answer. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, uh, otherwise, we're gonna dig it for uh, with the beta version, uh, and we let you know. Exactly. Okay, I think that's it from the React. Um, I can't wait. Uh, it's always good to have new version of the React. Um, we are always very, very curious. Uh, but now let's jump to Party Town. What a mystic name. Party. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Party Town. It's a funny name, but uh, we will not speak about the parties, unfortunately. There is a long time until next weekend, so... <laughs> so let's wait and it's Monday. Let's, let's focus. <laughs> let's focus on, on important knowledge. Party Town is a library that helps to run the third-party libraries, not in the main JavaScript thread, but take these third-party dependencies and run them inside the web workers threads. So, in fact, thanks to that, we can improve and boost our performance and leave the main JavaScript thread to handle only the code that uh, is written by ourselves and is connected with the app and all third-party code, for example, Google Tag Manager or any kind of analytics code, uh, Crashlytics, all kind of that stuff is pretty heavy. Uh, we can just take it from the main thread. It's a huge benefit, in my opinion, Chris. Um, it sounds like very game-changing, actually. Yeah. Um, there is a bunch of things that this library handle, like, for example, the communication between the main thread and the web worker. Because in the classic communication to, uh, using the POST uh, message system, we cannot share objects like document, window, and it's really hard to share the information between those uh, two threads. But uh, this library uh, solved that somehow. Uh, I need to check uh, how they, they solve this communication. But yeah, it's a game changer. We can do a lot of stuff with the performance in mind uh, thanks to that approach. And uh, yeah, let's dig this topic more and uh, maybe we will experiment in some projects, Chris. Of course. Let's, yes, let's I, see. I'm, yeah, I'm very happy to have a look uh, and I think we really start need to using it. Uh, so let's find out. Uh, let's have a look and uh, we'll let you know. Great. I know that you are really interested in uh, any kind of performance optimization tools and methods. I so I knew that it will be something interesting for you. <laughs> Yes, that's true. Uh, so we'll have a look. And speaking about the news, we're gonna go to the next one, which is Gatsby. Gatsby 4. Gatsby 4 beta has been released. It's available, you can use it. And for all Gatsby lovers, it's really fast. It's enormous fast and they put a lot of improvements around the um, performance optimization. So another thing you will love, Chris, <laughs> if you... I know you like uh, fast cars and fast frameworks. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Gatsby team decided to uh, put a lot of effort to improve the this render process. So they take uh, really heavy calculations and, and processing um, to increase 
the performance of uh, rendering the pages, so you don't have to wait a long time until the whole site will be rendered. Uh, which is really good. Um, you know, it takes some time to generate the static pages uh, for the previous version of the Gatsby, so it has been speed up. That's really great. Another great thing is that they changed the pipeline, how they queue the uh, tasks connected with the rendering the site, so you can perform better with, uh, you know, taking care of rendering your HTML. And what's really interesting, uh, the Gatsby 4 included now the server side rendering as it was not in included in the past. It, we have only static site uh, generation and right now they respond to the user needs and we will have the server side rendering available. So great. Uh, if you are using Gatsby, you probably may want to switch uh, to the new version. Uh, maybe not. But in don't the... switch yet because it's beta. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. This is this is something I want to mention right now. This is the beta version, so <laughs> you take it on your own risk. Okay. Don't say Tommy K recommend that you or Chris. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about your opinion and what do you really think about Gatsby. I mean, if it's me and I need to choose like perfect boilerplate, I mostly go with Next.js. Yeah, that's true. It's Next.js is very popular, but Gatsby is also popular. Um, I, it is, I think yeah. it's like, you know, someone like Strapi, someone like uh, PHP, CMS like WordPress, you know, someone like PrestaShop and some guys love other kind of shops. <laughs> it depends. I know. I don't know how we went from Gatsby to the WordPress, but <laughs> that's interesting. Magic. Maybe that's because Gatsby required uh, CMS to deliver the data to render our site. For example, translations. Uh, we can do this without data, but uh, if we want to integrate CMS, we have a a lot of ready uh, solutions for the WordPress and for the Strapi and for other kind of CMS. That's actually true. So what a save, Tomai. <laughs> <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was prepared. I was prepared for that uh, kind of questions. I'm sure you were. Is it all from Gatsby? Can uh, yeah. we go to the next video? Yes. Yes. So the last one and the most important is not JS. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Node.js new version 16.10.0, no breaking changes, they have upgraded the NPM uh, as a package manager for the dependencies, uh, added a new option for the CLI, like uh, no global search uh, paths. And um, it's a kind of tradition that we mention about Node.js, but uh, it's really a rarely situation when I can mention about something, you know, game changing. So uh, it's because you... we talk about this like mostly every week. Uh, so I don't think it will be like breaking changes every week. But it's good they update, it's good to they always stay on the top and uh, we know that like libraries so so updated. Yeah, no this is really so solid. It's still good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. This is really solid uh, solid tool and they deliver the new updates every like two weeks, one week, yes. Uh, so uh, even, Same as we. Yes. <laughs> even <laughs> if it's a small steps, uh, they obviously increase the quality of the whole product. So. I'm sure they follow front-end news and they want to be like mentioned every time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about that, I'm you, sure. You know who pay my bills. Like me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's funny because it's not a joke. <laughs> oh. Okay, guys, I think the jokes aside, uh, let's leave Tommy laughing and follow our Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and of course our lovely site, frontendhouse.com. Guys, see you next week. Tommy, see you soon on the lovely island. Stay with us. See you soon. Boom. Great joke, man. <laughs>